Glory to God in the highest and greetings to you, my family in Christ, wherever you are in the kingdom of God today. I thank you for joining me on this second edition of The Joy Report. ReadySteadyCut.com poses the question in an article, is Netflix's 2023 series, The Chosen One, about Jesus? Apparently, this TV show is about a young man who starts to perform miracles similar to the miracles of Jesus Christ. And, you know, he's an adolescent. The promo pic shows him uh, lying down with many around him, his arms outstretched as if on the cross. And the first thing I discerned about this was being aware it's important that we're aware that not all miracles are of the lord we recall in the book of exodus and in revelation interestingly enough at the beginning and at the end the enemy the enemy counterfeits miracles he counterfeits remember the enemy is always counterfeiting the things of the lord now the lord had told me last october 2022 Counterfeit miracles will not stand. They will not hold. They will not take. They may appear, right? All sin, all the enemy's illusions, they may appear to be similar. But it will require discernment from the believer. Do not exalt or idolize or follow all who will do miracles in the coming years. This coming year, 5784, 2024, is going to be a year unlike any other. It's going to, we're going to see a lot of spiritual pushback. We're going to see persecution in America uprising, but we're also going to see great things at the hands of God and at the hands of the disciples of Jesus Christ. That means that as the believers are performing miracles, so will the enemy and his children be performing miracles. It's important that we are discerning. Many will follow the Antichrist himself once they witness him performing miracles. That's how serious it is. Stay discerning and remember Matthew 24, 24, for there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. GodTV.com reports, they have lost their church, homes, but not their faith. Maui church members gather in coffee shop to worship Jesus. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Lord, we pray your continued presence and peace and just blessings over all the faithful and steadfast believers in Maui. These are members of Grace Baptist Church. Hallelujah. And there's just pictures of them gathered in a coffee shop, really just making it a house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Many speak against going to church and have issues with the churches. And I don't disagree that many churches have issues. But you know what? As we are the church, then Holy Spirit-filled believers need to start walking the talk and come together wherever and make a house of the Lord. There is nothing more powerful than many believers gathered together in the name of the Lord, especially amidst such chaos. I cannot imagine losing my home and losing everything I have and just being with all these believers in the house of the Lord, just forsaking everything, because just like Paul said, it's possible to be content in all circumstances. What a true testimony, and we give glory to God for these believers. Thank you, Jesus. 1 Corinthians 9, 24. Do you not know that in a race all the runners compete, but only one wins the prize? So run that you may lay hold of the prize and make it yours. Countries around the world are banning transgenders from competing in various types of com competitions, even down to chess tournaments, the last I saw it. And I just give glory to God. I give glory to God for these really uh, bold moves of faith because that's what they are. 
here in America, you are come against, you are fired, you are, your funding is canceled if you were to make the same moves, uh, which says a lot. But there are still places in the world which are holding true to God's word and they will be persecuted. And we pray the Lord's safety and peace over them in Jesus' name. And we just give thanks and glory to God for these believers who are standing up worldwide for the truth. Do we hate those who identify as transgender? No, of course not. But do we ever when it comes to the transgenderism agenda, when it comes to the continued changing of the creation that God made perfectly in his marvelous light, do we come against that agenda, that vain imagination? Absolutely. Absolutely. And this is why persecution will start rising because I believe that that voice will become soon louder in America and I give glory to God for that. 2 Corinthians 10.5, casting down imaginations in every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Decider.com reports, RuPaul's Drag Race Queen impersonates Jesus Christ in Snatch Game. Quote, we are going to hell. End quote. I'm not going to get into the specifics of the article. Many may be wondering why I am reporting on the things that I am. And for several years, I didn't look to the news nor to any worldly knowledge. And that's not what this is about. This is about the corners and crevices where many believers today are pointing fingers and turning blind eyes and completely away from these this degradation and the truth is these people need prayer as much as anyone else perhaps even more so i mean those of us who are devout in our faith we hear such things we see the mocking of jesus christ and it's it's hard not to cringe not to just open your eyes wide and just be horrified because you have the fear of god in you Yet that's how asleep these people are. And so we pray over all involved. We pray over all involved in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, have mercy. Have mercy, Lord God. Because truly, as according to Luke 23, 34, they know not what they do, Lord. Father, please have mercy and bring them to repentance, whatever it takes, Lord God. Forgive us, Lord. Please forgive us. Please forgive us, my Lord, my God, please forgive us. Luke 23, 34. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. Movieguide.org reports, football legend Deion Sanders declares, Jesus will satisfy your heart. Deion Sanders, former NFL cornerback turned head coach for the University of Colorado, took a stand for his faith in a recent Instagram post. Jesus, Sanders captioned the photos. Sex won't satisfy you. Fame won't satisfy you. Drugs won't satisfy you. Money won't satisfy you. Alcohol won't satisfy you. Success won't satisfy you. Life is empty without Jesus. He is the only one who can satisfy your heart. Amen. The second photo stated, pray until you see a breakthrough. Pray until the chains fall off. Pray until you hear God's voice. Sanders, nicknamed Primetime during his NFL career, frequently discusses his faith on so social media. Quote, Lord, I thank you for yesterday because if it weren't for yesterday, I wouldn't be prepared for today. I'm appreciative for the ups, downs, comings, goings, the light, the darkness, the good and the bad. I thank you for it all. He shared with his 3.4 million Instagram followers in another post. Lord, I thank you for every day that ends with a Y. Glory to God. You know, when my heart was more calloused, especially when I was into my conspiracy, and I, I'm telling you it's not something I did as a hobby. It was just my entire life, just like um, I am attempting to give myself to ministry as such in these times. It just seems like it's never enough. That's why I, I say attempting. Um, you know, you can never do too much for the Lord, right? But I formerly would read things like this, and I would kind of 
be like, yeah, right, you know, walk the talk. And sometimes we look at people with fame as if they can't follow the Lord. But that's not true, and it's not for us to judge when these random celebrities start talking about Jesus. We should give glory to God and just, be, you know, give thanks that these, these people are using their platforms to say the name Jesus. It's not up to us. We just have to plant seeds, you know, from Deion Sanders to you. You just need to plant the seed. You don't need to worry about it. And how you walk your walk, that's between you and the Lord. So glory to God. And Lord, please cover Deion Sanders. We pray covering over him that he can continue using his platform to spread the good word of Jesus Christ. Because as he said, life is empty without you. Amen. Psalm 150, verse 6. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Catholic News Agency reports Brazilian mom fined for homeschooling her son and instilling Christian values. A Brazilian mother has been fined and threatened with losing custody of her son for educating him at home and instilling Christian values. The legal advocacy organization ADF International has taken up her cause and filed a legal appeal to defend the mother's rights. According to an August 16 news brief, the incident occurred in Santa Catarina State in Brazil, located south of Sao Paulo. Regiane Cicillero decided to educate her 12-year-old son at home due to the coronavirus pandemic and the closure of public school in 2020. When the schools reopened in March 2021, Cicillero continued to educate her son at home, believing that he would receive a higher quality education in accordance with the family's religious convictions. However, the local prosecutor's office began legal proceedings against the mother for failing to enroll her minor child in the school system. Consequently, the mother has now been fined $300 plus a penalty of $20 a day, not to exceed $1,200 until she enrolls her son in school. The lawyer for ADF International in Latin America, Julio Pohl, called the fine and threat reprehensible since, quote, parents are the first authority for the education of the children. And this reaction by local authorities is a total violation of their parental rights guaranteed by international law, end quote. Pohl is also working on the legal defense of the brilliant Brazilian mother, and the ADF has filed a legal brief in the appeal process with the Court of Justice of Santa Catarina State. According to the legal advocacy organization, more than 70,000 people receive education at home in Brazil. Likewise, the right of parents to choose the type of education for their children is established in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in Article 26 and Section 3. In response to the legal ordeal, Cicillero uh, stated, I choose to homeschool my son because I believe it's best for him, and I am committed to providing him with the best education possible. In addition, homeschooling allows me to transmit our faith and our values, which are so important to our family, values that are constantly questioned and undermined by the Brazilian public school system on a daily basis. All parents have the right and obligation given by God to make decisions that provide the best results for our children, she said. I hope that one day will come when I and other people in Brazil can exercise our rights as parents without fear of being fined and persecuted. Hallelujah and glory to God. Lord, we send prayer over Cicillero and her son and over Julio Pohl, her lawyer, and the organization ADF International, and over the entire school system in Brazil, Lord, we pray over these things. We raise these things up to you, Lord. Please keep your your watchful eye on this situation. We thank you for interfering and touching the hearts and the of, of the judges and all involved, all involved, hallelujah. We ask you to continue to allow this woman, uh, as it is according to your will, of course, to homeschool her son, if it be your will, you know, we, we give you thanks for the ability to raise our children up, Lord, as the Bible instructs us to. And we know that it will not be an easy play, especially going forward uh, to homeschool our children, Lord. And we will continue to pray on these matters. And we thank you for uh, protecting this Brazilian mother. We give glory to God for this Brazilian mother who is taking a really steadfast stance 
in her beliefs and for the glory of you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for your hand in this matter. I personally have friends that homeschool their children and, um, you know, believers, believers that are raising their children up in the Lord, just like we're called to. And it is there. There's not a huge pushback in America yet, but there is definitely a stigma, you know, with these kids. And, and this can't be easy, especially uh, we have many freedoms in America. Let us never forget the freedoms that we do have here in America. And uh, I'm not sure, you know, the article said that this woman, that the fine can only go up to $1,200. Uh, who knows, you know, maybe they'll take custody of her son after $1,200. We don't know. So I, I ask you to pray for this Brazilian mother uh, and for her son, hallelujah, because um, her name is Reggie Ann C. Chilero. And, um, you know, we just, we we will continue to pray for them. And, and please remember that the believers worldwide are undergoing persecution as they continue to stand up to rise up higher and higher and higher in their faith in the Lord. Proverbs 22 and 6, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Fox News reports, GOP's Max Miller, Ilhan Omar, clash over, quote, bigoted Christian post. You have gone too far. Omar accused Miller of disregarding religious freedoms after the GOP congressman told a woman to delete her bigoted post promoting Christianity as the only true faith. Republican Ohio Representative Max Miller clashed with Representative Ilhan Omar, Democrat out of Minnesota, on Tuesday night after the GOP congressman called a post bigoted for promoting Christianity as the one true religion. Miller sparked the confrontation after taking issue with a former Ohio GOP employee, Lizzie Marbach, who posted to social media, there's no hope for any of us outside of having faith in Jesus Christ alone. Miller accused Marbach of bigotry and undermining religious freedom in the U.S., writing, this is one of the most bigoted treats I have ever seen. Delete it, Lizzie. He added, religious freedom in the United States applies to every religion. You have gone too far. Marbach soon found an unexpected ally in Omar, a Democratic congresswoman and progressive Muslim who accused Miller of violating the meaning of religious freedom by making accusations of bigotry. No, stating the core beliefs or principles of your faith isn't bigoted as Lizzie did. It's religious freedom and no one should be scolded for that, Omar said. It's also wrong to speak about religious freedom while simultaneously harassing people who freely express their beliefs, she added. Comments from progressives on Omar's response pushed back on the congresswoman's assessment, encouraging her to walk back her defense of Marbeck. That's actually her belief. You can disagree, but it's not bigoted her for, for her to say what her beliefs are. That's all, Omar clarified. Miller later apologized for the situation, saying, I posted something earlier that conveyed a message I did not intend. I will not try to hide my mistake or run from it. I sincerely apologize to Lizzie and to everyone who read my post. Marbach later accepted the apology, saying, Max, I accept your apology 100%. However, the truth is that it is not for me whom you need forgiveness, but God himself. I genuinely pray you seek him and find salvation. Hoo -hoo. <laughs> this is a, this is a, this is a, a good one. This one's got a lot going on here. So we see... One politician, you know, posts online, Jesus Christ, there's no hope outside of Jesus Christ alone. Hallelujah, Lord, we give you glory. Hallelujah for Lizzie Marbach. We don't, you know, politics aside, anyone who's touting the truth, the truth, the truth, you know, hallelujah, glory to God. We want people that have platforms spreading the word of Jesus Christ and let all who have ears hear, let them hear that his sheep will follow him, you know. It's important, it is important that, that those with platforms spread the truth. What I find interesting, um, so here, the person who came against her, he actually, you know, he calls her a bigot. Okay, we expected that. And then he actually tells her to delete it. And I'm grateful that she didn't delete it. You know, glory to God for that. 
that's important. And then what happens is, is a third congresswoman comes out of nowhere who's actually a Muslim and stands up for the woman stating Jesus Christ is the only way. This Muslim woman stands up for her and says, um, you know, not in, in, in supporting Jesus Christ as she is a Muslim, but she stands up for the clouded desecration here of what religious freedom actually is, right? So glory to God for all involved. Um, just a really loaded situation here. So the person who comes against the other person ends up apologizing. And still Lizzie Marbach, this uh, politician on fire for the Lord. I accept your apology, she says, but the forgiveness you need is from God himself. I pray you seek salvation. And then she posts, I think this is on her Twitter, um, a bunch of scripture from the parable of the unforgiving servant. Hallelujah and glory to God. I just, I do, I, I think these situations are just so fascinating. Uh, I really, really do. And I give glory to God for Lizzie. Lord, keep, we pray strength and boldness over Lizzie Marbach in Jesus name. Please continue to use her greatly for your kingdom, Lord God. Hallelujah. And may Max Miller come to repentance and may all who do not follow you involved in this situation be brought to repentance in Jesus name for the glory of God. Matthew 10, 22, you will be hated by everyone because of me, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. I thank you again for joining me on this second edition of the Joy Report. In closing, Romans 8.31, What then shall we say in response to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us?